Howdy. I'm George Finney, and uh, we're here to make you uh, more well aware when it comes to cybersecurity. And uh, this is the week we get to talk about secrecy. So uh, this week, we're about halfway through the masterclass, which is very exciting. Um, but so like every week, we kind of had a theme uh, for, for the week. And uh, so I'm, I'm calling our theme, Can You Keep a Secret for Me? Um, and I, I've thought a little bit about um, uh, why we say uh, keep a secret. Um, you know, we, we, we could instead say, um, can you hold a secret for me? Um, you know, because th the idea is, is still that, um, you know, you know it's, it's George's secret if I'm telling it. Um, so we'll, we'll talk about this a, a little bit more, but I, I think the, 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 the key here is that it's personal. Um, so if, if, if I give you a secret, it's not mine anymore, it's yours. Uh, and that's, I think, the secret to keeping secrets is 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 making it uh, personal. Um, so, where where I start off, off here is actually uh, a story, like like all the other uh, uh, habits. Um, uh, and of co of course, you, you if if you don't recognize the the the, the face smiling back at you, uh, this is uh, Fred Rogers, uh, otherwise known as Mister Rogers, and uh, his his cute little friend there um, is Daniel Tiger. Uh, so if you don't know about Daniel the Tiger, there's a whole uh, series of, of cartoons based on uh, the, the, the stuffed animal. It's, it's animated. Uh, it's very great. Um, so a, a, a couple of years ago, I was, I was re-watching the original Mr. Rogers uh, with my daughter. Um, so she was pretty young and, you know, we were going through the, uh, the original black and white episodes from the 1960s. And you know, of course, you know, I, I've, I grew up on Mr. Rogers and, you know, there, there's always the, uh, the, the songs, I lo love the songs. Um, he, he didn't start out uh, with the, the, the theme song or the, the closing uh, song um, about feelings. Uh, initially it was, it was, you know, it, it started out, you know, tomorrow, tomorrow, we'll start the day tomorrow with this. Okay, so sorry, I, I'm, I'm not a professional singer. I, I won't subject you to any more of that. Um, but you know the 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 song that, that he started singing later on uh, was uh, was about feelings, um, and he he you know again it evolved over time, um, but he said something that struck me um, after he talked about uh, the the feeling songs, um, and that is that you know he, he he was speaking directly to to kids and he he, he told them you know you, you know whatever your feelings are, um, they're yours. And you get to decide um, which feelings you tell to an adult um, and, and which you keep to yourself. And I, I, I thought this was really striking because this is Mr. Rogers um, saying it's okay to kids keep secrets. Uh, I mean, essentially, right? So, so the, this idea that you know, keeping secrets is actually a healthy part of uh, your, your, your experience of becoming a, a healthy, you know, normal uh, uh, adult, uh, it, I, I think is, is, is really key, right? As, as parents, we don't want our kids to keep secrets. Um, and, and obviously there are bad secrets that, that we want to avoid. Um, and, and of course we, we have to help our, our kids uh, learn how, how, you know, which is which. And I, I think that's, that's really important. Um, so, you know, we, this, this, negative per, per perception that we have on secrets um, is, isn't necessarily uh, a bad thing. I think we, you know, we, we, we walk around it uh, pretty carefully. Um, but if, if you look at the, the, the next picture, um, you immediately know um, what, what we're seeing in, in this picture, right? You know, this doesn't take explanation. Um, this, this is, you know, this is a mom telling her daughter uh, a secret and you, you can tell Really, by the daughter's eyes, which I think, which I think is amazing. Um, it's it's such a uh, uh, such a deep kind of connection between them. Um, but you 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 know what's going on in, in, in their minds, and it, and and that's good, right? You know, you you kind of want to be that kid again, like like hearing the secret and and feeling like um, you're connected because secrets do connect us, right? The, you know, the, there there's a relationship um, that that you have to have. Uh, between whoever you're sharing a secret with, in order to feel comfortable sharing the secret, and, and I think having that connection is is a real uh, part of the, of the human experience. So bringing this back to cybersecurity, 
um, the, my definition for, for secrecy is that um, it's the natural and appropriate barrier between that which should be public and that which should remain private. Um, and so, you know, when you think about, well, well what does private mean? Um, you know, that, that could have a lot of different definitions uh, because you, you share groups, right? You, you share, a, you know, a private information amongst your different small communities. Um, and unlike people, um, all secrets aren't created equal. Um, we, we treat different secrets uh, differently. Uh, and there, there are different types of secrets, right? So there, there are the kinds of secrets that are like, uh, you know, Las Vegas secrets, right? The, you know, you, uh, uh, you know, the, 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 you know, whatever happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Um, you know, there are other kinds of secrets like, okay, if nobody hears from me uh, in the next three days, then you got to tell the secret to the whole world, right? Those, those are uh, interesting secrets. Um, uh, uh, you know, but okay, well, what about like, you know, beauty secrets, right? Uh, well, that's, that's not necessarily a secret, uh, uh, but um, you know, you you have that connection if you're sharing a beauty secret with someone else. Um, and then the, there there are these kinds of secrets I call Voldemort secrets, uh, which is it's 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 a secret that really everybody knows, but we just don't talk about. Um, and I'm I'm sure there are lots of other uh, you know categories of secrets we could come up with. Um, but we we generally refer to 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 uh, you know the, this you know different treatment of secrets. Uh, we call it classification, um, or or sometimes data classification. Um, so with secrets, we we are highly aware of whose secret it is, right? You know, if George tells you a secret, you know, you you have that connection and you understand that that you know, okay, this is George, and George would want me to uh, do X, Y, or Z with with the secret. Um, but when you when you work with different communities, um, you know we 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 typically call this person in, in the cybersecurity world the data owner, um, and that data owner is is the person who gets to decide what you know how the the, the secret is classified, um, and and they're really the ones that 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 should have the authority uh, to 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 say how it how it should be handled. Um, so let, let's give some some concrete examples of of, of secrets. Um, so th there's there's a famous story uh, uh, you probably heard of uh, of, of how radar uh, was developed in, in the 1940s uh, during World War II. Um, so the British had radar, um, and the, the they well, they wanted to keep that a secret from the Germans, um, and and you know they they went so far um, as to to you know not act as though they had radar uh, when you know German planes or bombers were flying over. Uh, bombing their cities, right? They they still had air raid sirens. They still had these other protections in place that that uh, you know would warn uh, user uh, uh, their their citizens for uh, uh, for when an attack was was, was imminent. Um, but radar gave them an advantage, right? They they, they needed to keep that secret um, in in order to 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 be able to leverage it when it mattered, right? So uh, you know if if it were maybe just one or two bombers, you know they they could treat that differently than if it was a full blown aerial invasion. Um, and, you know, thinking of how, you know, carefully they kept that secret, um, you know, I mean, we, they knew there were German spies in, in their ranks and, you know, living, uh, you know, throughout the country. And if they had acted differently, uh, you know, that would have been something that the Germans could have, could have picked up on. Uh, but the same is true for uh, when the Russians launched Sputnik, right? It, it was a completely, uh, you know, unexpected happening, and all of the work that 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 that, that went into building Sputnik uh, was was done in secret. Um, and and why did they they do that? Again, technical technological advantage um, to to get to be the first that that, that launched something into space. Um, but in the book, I talk about. Um, you know the secrets that that Steve Jobs uh, at, at at Apple and Bill Gates at Microsoft kept, um, and you know there was a third group, right? You know it, everybody thinks about Microsoft versus Apple, but really it was Xerox that developed um, the secrets that 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 made Steve Jobs and Bill Gates successful. Uh, but Xerox, uh, they they knew they had something really cool. Uh, you know, a AKA the, the, the user, you know, visual desktop and the mouse and, and some other things. Um, but they knew they, they weren't going to go very far with those things. You know, they, they, their focus was copy machines. Um, so their secret, they decided to license to other companies. Um, Steve Jobs, you know, uh, uh, moved forward with Apple. Um, 
he protected his secrets uh, with contract, right? So he made a contract with Bill Gates to help develop some software for the early Apple computers, and he protected it with contract, and, and there was an expiration date. Uh, so we'll talk about more, more about the expiration date for secrets uh, uh, later on. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, because of the delays with, with building his, his first Apple computers, um, that contract expired, which allowed Bill Gates uh, to launch his own competing operating system, Microsoft Windows, and again, he was first to market getting the advantage over uh, his competitors. Bill Gates didn't tell anybody that he was developing it in secret um, and was able to leverage that, right? So there, there are lots of ways uh, to, to deal with secrets. There's, there's, there's no one right or perfect way uh, to, to, to keep a secret. And it, it, it really depends on who you are and what you need to accomplish. Uh, so, okay, that, that's, that's all cool. Um, but how do you how do you get your 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 the people around you to to take those secrets seriously? Um, so th there was a famous uh, research study done. Um, so all of the TV shows about doctors where you're you're seeing the surgeons wash their hands, um, it's all Hollywood lies. <laughs> um, so uh, apparently, um, it it really t uh, hospitals really uh, have have put a lot of effort um, into getting doctors to remember to wash their hands. Um, and th they think that th there, there are thousands of, of, of infections or, or deaths every year um, that could have been prevented with hand washing. So they, they take this very, very seriously. Um, so one, one of my favorite uh, uh, professors and, and authors, uh, his name is Adam Grant, uh, did this study of, uh, about doctors and hand washing, uh, 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 I, I think 20 years ago now. Um, and what, what he, so he, he studied the different ways that hospitals were trying to get uh, doctors to remember to wash their hands. Um, and, and, you know, they, they put up posters. So if you can imagine, you know, kind of on the wall next to the mirror there, um, you know, a, you know a, a poster, you know, reminding your, you know, the, the doctors to wash their hands. Uh, they, they tried different kinds of signs. Um, and ultimately, the, the, the signs that worked the best um, were the ones that, that, that made Hand washing personal for them, um, and, and what I mean by that is that they had pictures of uh, patients of the hospital, right? It, it wasn't just a sign that said, "Please stop and wash your hands," or you know, "Employees must wash hands before they return to work." Um, they they had pictures of real people, real human beings, to make that human uh, connection. So when, when I started out by by saying, uh, you know, why do we say keep a secret instead of hold a secret? Um, we, we say keep a secret because it's now ours, because it's personal to us. Uh, we understand that we're supposed to protect those secrets according to the teller's wishes, um, but we also recognize that we can and will tell the secret when it's appropriate. Um, and, and, and this trust is at the heart of all of our relationships, uh, so much so that, that breaching this trust uh, could mean ruining a friendship, uh, maybe leaving a job or, or potentially diminishing your own trust with other members of the community, right? Um, and so, so this lesson from, from doctors, I, I think we can bring back to our own uh, efforts to, to improve security awareness uh, in, in our communities. Um, and and it, it can also help us hack our own habits uh, when it comes to, uh, to, to security. Um, so there, there's this great from, uh, quote from, from a French novelist, uh, 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 his, his name is Andre Malraux, um, and the, the, the quote, it, it, I, I love this, it's, a man is not what he thinks he is. Uh, he is what he hides, um, which is an interesting way of, of thinking about how secrets shape uh, our, the world around us. Um, so with that, um, I'd, I'd like you uh, to, uh, to tell me you, right now, just you can all just kind of uh, jump in right at once. I, I'd like you to tell me your deepest, darkest, most embarrassing secret. Okay, nobody, no, nobody's doing this, right? Um, so, so I've, 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 I've asked, uh, you know, the the crowds that I spoke to uh, in the in the past at different events uh, uh, to tell me uh, their deep, deepest, darkest, most embarrassing secret, um, and literally no one has ever uh, told me their deepest, darkest secret, which I, which I find really disappointing. Um, however, um, I, I think there's a reason for this. And uh, so, you know, I mean, the, the, the poor uh, pug here is so cute. He's, he's, uh, he, he's, he's very embarrassed about wearing the cone of shame. Um, but when, <laughs> you know, we, we really relate to this, but, you know, when you thought about whatever that secret was, um, 
I, I, I believe that it didn't take you any amount of time uh, to think of whatever that secret was. Um, you, you, you didn't have to think, well, is it this one or is it that other one? You, you immediately knew you weren't going to tell me anything. Um, it didn't take you any amount of time. And so if we go back to the, uh, to, to the introductory uh, 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 habit or chapter on, on, on over the overall habits, I showed you this picture. Um, and uh, again, just to refresh your memory, this is a picture of uh, a, a theory of neuroscience called the triune brain theory. Um, and, and uh, you know, if, if there were any neuroscientists on the call, they would say, well, this, this, the triune brain theory is, is, is you know, 30 years old and uh, you know, we, we've come so far since then, uh, there's, a, there's a lot more to it. And, and yes, that, that, that's true. Um, but essentially, you know, the, the, the oldest parts of the brain uh, the, 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 the parts of the brain that we share the most with, with um, you know, uh, say snakes, um, we call uh, the reptilian brain. Uh, so that's really where, where habits are, are, are kind of buried down, down deep in, in, inside the brain structure. Um, that, that's where instincts are. That's where, you know, the fight or flight mechanisms kind of come into play. Um, so, you know, in terms of, uh, of speed, it's, it's, it's almost instant, right? So, uh, the, there, there's one uh, uh, fam famous study that, that we'll talk about probably in a couple of weeks um, that uh, uh, showed people uh, just a, a flash of, of, a, of an image um, for two uh, uh, one hundredths of a second. Uh, it's not enough for your conscious mind to be able to react, but the, the reptilian brain already saw that and was already changing uh, your, your uh, brain chemistry and, and, and your uh, 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 your, your, the other parts of, of your body to prepare for, 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 for a fight, right? That's how fast it is. Um, there, there's no conscious thought there. Um, and it's, it's really limited on, on the things that, that it can do. So it's, it's low powered, essentially. Um, when you move up uh, the limbic system, uh, that, that's really where your emotions are. Um, it's also where your decision making uh, comes in, right? So you make decisions emotionally, um, not logically. Um, and, and what people think is that there, there are probably only four or six or eight uh, primary emotions uh, that you can feel, that you can experience. Um, and, you know, all of the, the, the subcategories, subflavors of emotions, you know, are, are kind of play out there. Uh, but in terms of bandwidth, really, you're talking about six or maybe eight uh, things that it can do in terms of power. Um, but it's also really, really fast. Uh, again, you, you generally know how you feel about something. Um, pretty much instantly, whereas, you know, to, to, to think about why you feel that way, um, you know, might take you a lot longer. So, so th those, th those, those uh, thoughts about why, um, are, you know, really come from your neocortex. Um, and so there is no limit in, in, on the amount of things that your, your mind can, can think of. Uh, and and that, that's really where the, ne the power of the neocortex come in. However, it does take you a long time to, to kind of think about some things sometimes. Um, and, and you know the, the neocortex uh, sometimes is is uh, you know explains why you feel a certain way. Um, other times, I think it, it, it's really justifying the things that you already feel. Um, and so you know the, the making it personal uh, again, you know, going back to secrets um, is is moving um, what whatever it is you're trying to protect. That secret moves it down from from being in the neocortex. Uh, where it, it takes you a long time to think about things um, down further into the deeper parts of the brain. And that's, that's really, I think, the key to being successful at protecting uh, yourself or your communities online is, is making those things personal. And, and really what we're doing is, is, is we're, we're moving you know, down from, from just theoretical thought um, down to feelings, uh, down to habits. Um, and, and, and I think this is the power of uh, the, the the nine cybersecurity habits is making uh, you know making those things almost automatic, right? So you know I, I think a lot of times people feel like security is hard, um, and by by focusing on habits instead, uh, we're, we're making it easy because uh, you know our our brains are just uh, wired to do that, um, and and that's something that the neocortex is 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 really unique uh, in, in being able to accomplish for us because you know by by thinking of the things in the neocortex. Uh, we, we can be intentional uh, about the, the habits that, that are buried in our reptilian brain. We, we can be intentional about the things that are valuable to us. So, uh, you know, 
it's it's tempting always to to go like when you start a conversation about secrets, it, it's tempting to go directly into a discussion about controls and how to protect those secrets. But you know, I, I wanted to take a few minutes to to uh, to kind of talk about the big picture, um, you know, and and not just say like, okay, well, you need a firewall or you need encryption. Um, those things are, are interesting, but you, you really need the big picture to understand why you're protecting something uh, in, in order to answer the question on, on how uh, you'll protect something. Um, so in, in, the, in the literacy ch chapter, uh, talking about the habit of, of, of literacy, one of the things we talked about doing uh, was, was creating a risk register. So think, think about all of the, the, the risks uh, that you have, uh, uh, that you're potentially exposed to in your life for your career. Um, and you know, we, we just wanted to capture them, capture the likelihood of how often you know they might happen, you know, realistically, what the impact uh, you know uh, of those risks might might be. Um, but really, there are only four ways of dealing with risk, and these are those four ways. Um, so uh, accepting a risk is really like, okay, I, you know, I, I can't do anything about it, um, uh, but you know, I, I'm just going to accept that. And and you know, nobody really wants to accept a risk. I think. Um, but but really, there are some realities um, about uh, business that that you know require you to take risk um, in order to 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 uh, to get uh, new opportunities. Uh, uh, and and I, I think that's that's okay, right? Um, you know, risk e e equals reward sometimes. Um, so you know, okay, maybe you want to move to a new new city or uh, for a job or for a relationship. Uh, though that could be a risk. Um, and, and that's that's personal. That's that's not necessarily about uh, you know uh, anything uh, related to your career. But those are still risks, and, and it's and it's still uh, the, these four methods still apply to those. Um, and, and it's just as true, you know, when you are in a business uh, setting, um, when you're creating a new product or uh, going into a new line of business, right? Those those risks are are managed the same way. Um, of avoidance, um, or I, you know, I also sometimes say prevention. Um, this, this this avoidance category is, is where most of our uh, risk controls are, are focused. Um, so, uh, you know, this is this is this is usually our primary strategy uh, uh, because you know that's really the most cost-effective approach, right? You know, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Um, so, and, and and by the way, I, I have listed these in alphabetical order on purpose. Um, you know, I, I'm not you know, prioritizing any one over the other. Um, you know, th there's there's no again one right way to to do this. Um, uh, so, you know, uh, if you can't prevent something, the next best thing I think is to, is to reduce the risk or mitigate the risk, um, or or maybe detect the risk. Uh, and so, you know, you, you you can again accomplish that in a in a myriad of ways. Um, and, and you know, I, I think the final uh, uh, way of managing risk is, is, is transference. Um, and, you know, transference, some, some people say um, it's about sharing risk. Um, and so when you think of that, you, you think of insurance. Uh, maybe for, on a personal level, you, you think about identity theft protection. Um, and in some cases, you know, the, the government will limit damages for identity theft, which essentially transfers the risk to uh, to the company, so so the FTC uh, limits identity theft uh, uh, most most cases down to to fifty dollars. Um, so if your credit card gets stolen and there's some fraudulent transfers, and uh, you know, okay, well, you you might have to pay fifty dollars, maybe not, uh, but really that risk is transferred to the credit card company. Um, so these are, are are really the main four ways, four categories of of how uh, you 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 deal with risk. Um, and, and where you go from there, uh, you know, could get very deep, very complex, really quickly. Um, and, and so the, the, the way I approach, uh, you know, that is, is, is to tell the example uh, of, of Thomas Edison. So again, you know, in the book, you, you, you probably uh, saw in the first chapter, uh, uh, you know, I, I compare, uh, you know, Johann Gutenberg to, uh, to Thomas Edison and, and, and kind of contrast them. Um, so specifically, Edison uh, was very unique. So he was known, you know, he, he started his company. Uh, I, I think he maybe had four or five engineers that worked directly with him. Um, th they were his friends, you know, that, that's, that's his core group of founders, if you will. Um, but he, he quickly added hundreds of engineers working uh, with him on, on a multitude of different projects. Um, 
And so, okay, well, he needed to keep his company uh, secrets safe. Um, how, how do you how do you do that when when you're you're brainstorming and solving all of these complex uh, challenges? Um, so, you know, what he did is he organized his whole company around th this philosophy of security and and compartmentalization. So, uh, he really was the only person uh, that knew all of the different. Uh, uh, parts of the business and all of the different projects that were being worked on and what went into them. Um, he hired auditors to track all of the uh, the hours that people were working on, uh, uh, you know, what, what supplies were being used, those kinds of things. Um, and, you know, he, he, so he had insight into, into his organization. And I would say, you know, uh, well, you know, Edison was probably a single point of failure if he uh, were, were, to, were to have passed away. Uh, we'd probably be talking about well how how nobody knew how to run the company in, in his absence, but that that didn't happen, right? And I, I think you need to to have backups and those kinds of things. Those are also a part of security. Um, but by contrast, Gutenberg, uh, instead of collaborating with people, he worked completely in secret. Um, his the the one rogue insider that he had, uh, you know, was his main most trusted apprentice. Um, so you know if if the usual wisdom about secrets were, were true, um, Guten should have been more secure, but in fact, he, he was less secure. Um, you know, he, he was the victim of a rogue insider because, um, you know, the insider had no skin in the game, right? There, there, you know, he, he was able to, to capitalize on those secrets um, and then sell them off. Um, whereas Edison, in, in contrast, uh, was, was kind of the, the forerunner of, of giving stock options to employees. Um, so by giving, you know, uh, sh sharing the, the ownership of, of, of the projects that they were working on, um, you know, Ed Edison gave them a, a stake. They, he gave them some skin in the game, and he went on to become, you know, really the most prolific and successful inventor in, in history. Um, you know, Gutenberg only shared his secrets with the one person, and that was the, the end of his career. Uh, so there were other distant differences. Um, Edison located his whole business away from uh, fr from you know the main parts of, uh, uh, of of town and and you know kind of built his own warehouse. Uh, so again, you know isolation, another great uh, way of of uh, of uh, mitigating or, or, or preventing uh, secrets from 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 leaking out. Um, but so I, I think this difference between uh, the two it doesn't explain just why Edison was more successful. Uh, or, or, or more secure, or you know, he he was more successful as well, um, and, and you know, the same is true of Steve Steve Jobs or, or Bill Gates. Uh, the same is true whether you're the president of a company or the pastor of a church. Uh, you know, community really is the basis for all our security, and yet it you know it's it's sometimes easier to 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 think well we're, we're better off on our own. We can keep our secrets, and there there are other ways of of of, of making that happen. Um, so, uh, okay, uh, I've, I've got secrets, cool. Well, what, what do I do with them um, well, one, once I have them? Um, and so, you know, secrets always, always have an expiration date. Um, you know, so, so for some secrets, you know, I, you know, I might take them uh, to the grave, uh, so to speak, um, uh, but that's the expiration date. If, if, if I'm gone, um, that secret can get out. Um, so I, I've got this concept that I, that I really call, you know, in, in, in companies, uh, I call it digital litter. Um, so if, if you keep uh, secrets past their expiration date, if, if you keep data uh, past its expiration date, uh, digital litter can, can really become a, a liability. Um, so the, 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 the schedule you have kind of up uh, on your screen is, is really more focused on, on, on personal outcomes, right? So um, you know, maybe you should keep your uh, your, your paycheck stubs for uh, for a few years. Um, you know, maybe you should keep your credit card statements just uh, for resolution uh, for for three years. And and so, wh why do I say that? Well, well, for tax information, for example, um, the IRS can audit you uh, up to three years in the past. Um, so you know, maybe uh, uh, credit card statements where you have expenses. Um, you know, could come into play for three years, but they they, they aren't really that valuable uh, past that. Uh, for insurance, uh, you know, insurance might might be a longer uh, kind of term thing. Uh, loans, again, um, you know, if you're keeping you know health records, however, 
um, you, you might want to keep them for the rest of your life, right? If you had a, a surgery, uh, uh, you know, a, a broken bone, um, you know, that might come up again, uh, uh, you know, in 10 or 20 or 30 years when, uh, you know, hopefully you get older and, uh, you know, those things might kind of crop up and you're always being asked, well, you know, what, what's, what, what surgery did you have before? Um, so, okay, well, you, you know that, that data has an expiration date. Uh, uh, that secrets have an expiration date, and and there's some key ways uh, to 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 destroy uh, that information to make sure that it that it doesn't become a liability for you. So if it's a paper record, you can uh, get a nice crosscut shredder. Uh, you can sign up for services that that will come and pick up your stuff and shred them for you. Uh, you could burn the paper. Uh, you know, I, I, I think of, you know, the, the, the stereotypical Hollywood movie where, you know, you go through a bad breakup and you burn all of the love letters, uh, which, you know, uh, man, that's, that's really secure. You're, you're, <laughs> the, 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 those things are never going to fall into someone else's hands after that. And, you, you know, it, while, you know, shredding, you know, maybe a, a dedicated uh, team of people can, can tape all those pieces of paper back together, burning uh, obviously is, is permanent. Um, Similar idea with uh, with with uh, electronic uh, destruction. So, um, if it's electronic information, um, you you could uh, degauss, uh, which is just demagnify the the, the magnetic spinning disk. Um, you know, sometimes you know, built into some operating systems, you can just write ones and zeros over the hard drive where your data used to be. Um, you know, if you only do it once, uh, it's it's much easier to recover. Uh, than if you do that multiple times. So I know Apple has uh, a, a couple of settings. So three years is the DoD standard. Uh, some people go for for or for three times is is the DoD standard. Uh, seven rewrites is uh, is also another option. Um, again, that's medium because someone could uh, uh, could uh, redo that. Um, most people don't recommend that you uh, you burn your hard drives. Uh, by the way, um, you know they're still somewhat recoverable. Uh, it just really depends on, on on the device and how badly burned they are, um, and you know they're not really that flammable. Um, but you know if you have online information like on Facebook, uh, you know just deleting your account doesn't necessarily uh, delete all of your information. Um, so you know I, I would say that destruction method is is is, is kind of low uh, in terms of uh, uh, security. Um, you know those those companies may not comply uh, with your request to destroy it. Uh, those companies may have backups where your information still hangs around, uh, you know, and, and could be uh, exposed later on. Um, so uh, digital litter, bad. Um, uh, secrecy habit, uh, good. Um, so now, now that we come to uh, the, the habit part, uh, you know, the, the prompts here, again, prompts are slightly different from, from, from habit to habit. Uh, the ones I've listed here are uh, are, are, are really at the, you know, usually at the beginning of a, of a process. Um, so, you know, uh, one, one example I give is, you know, uh, before I uh, share my screen, like I'm doing right now for, for a presentation, um, I always check <clears throat> my, my tabs. I, I, I look at the, the desktop background that, I, that I'm showing. Uh, you know, is there anything there that, uh, that if it were leaked, is, is that something that, that could uh, cause an issue? Um, so the prompt is, uh, but before I share my screen, uh, let me go think about that for a second. Uh, the habit is, you know, do all of those checks. Um, and then, you know, the, the reward again, uh, you know, uh, I'm going to give myself a piece of candy or, or uh, high five myself or something like that. Um, so uh, I, I've, I've listed some sample uh, uh, habits that are ha some sample behaviors that you can uh, uh, look at implementing. Um, so I, I just moved into a new office at work, um, and I've, I've implemented my own clean desk policy. So I make sure that there aren't any papers um, uh, sitting on my desk. And the prompt there is, well, I'm about to leave for the day. Um, the, the habit is I will clean my desk, uh, and you know, on the way home, you know, I'll treat myself to, uh, uh, to my favorite song in the car on the way home. Uh, again, build that habit, reinforce it. Uh, and, and think about how frequent uh, the, these, not, not all of these things uh, are necessarily going to have happen every day. Um, uh, you know, for example, a Kaizen day, if you're not familiar with a Kaizen day, um, you know, that, that can, you know, think of it like a spring cleaning uh, uh, event. Um, you know, maybe you can, uh, you know, organize something in, in your community, in your organization uh, to, to have people think about, well, hey, uh, what can we do today 
uh, to improve security. Um, uh, you know, uh, and so think about your 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 recipes. Uh, again, you know, I I, I uh, will be giving away the, uh, the 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 highly anticipated 2020 coffee mug. Um, uh, uh, submit your recipes. Let me know uh, what you're going to be focusing on. Um, the the two sample ones um, uh, I I gave. You know, just just simple. Um, when I stand up for my desk, I'm I'm gonna lock my computer, um, and then I'm gonna you know do do a fist pump, right? Um, and uh, again, I, I want to emphasize that the habits don't have to take you a lot of time. They don't have to be uh, uh, very extensive because once you start having successes, like okay, every time I lock my computer, uh, I'm, I'm pressing Control Alt Delete to to lock it as I walk away. Um, that reinforces your your own. Uh, value system, right? It, 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 you're telling yourself essentially, I value uh, uh, being, a, you know, a, a person uh, that that is a cyber secure person. Um, so, you know, e e even if it's small, just locking your computer as you walk away, let that reinforce how, how much security means to you. Um, you know, maybe you can in implement a, a, a clean desk policy, um, or, you know, maybe you can think about well, you know, as as I go through my tax records, when it, when tax season comes along, I'm gonna um, encrypt those files, right? You know, let that help start to build more of the secrecy habit. Um, so, you know, when my phone rings, another you know example might be, um, you know, if if I get a text or whatever from a purporting to be from my bank or credit card company, I always, you know, as far as secrecy goes. Go to the uh, to directly to the website. I don't click on the the, the links. Um, you know, think of yourself as the kind of person uh, that makes them more secure. Uh, uh, so next week we'll be talking about the culture habit. Um, actually, not next week. Uh, we are going to take the week of Thanksgiving off. Uh, so uh, you know, hope you can go spend time with your families. We'll pick up uh, uh, the week after, uh, which I think is the. Uh, let me get you the date, just so. It will be December second, so I, I will send out uh, kind of a summary uh, of uh, of the, the the first five weeks uh, and all the videos uh, uh, later this week, um, and I'll kind of uh, lay out the schedule for for the remaining classes. So we'll have a couple meetings in December, um, and then we'll finish up with a couple meetings in uh, uh, in the beginning of January. Um, and with that. Um, Thank you so much for, uh, uh, for, for following along and uh, helping uh, uh, make yourself more well aware when it comes to cybersecurity and we'll see you next time.